I can do that. Oh, not bad. This is a new capability I didn't know I had. It's like putting pieces of the puzzle together and the end puzzle is basically you, like you discovering what you can do. Hi, I'm Sahana Shastri. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Astra. Um, what interests me to work on is the operations and testing part at Astra. And um, I'm a master's student in Space Sciences and Technologies at the University of Bremen. Hi, I'm Lotta Dreger. I'm with the um, project management team in Astra. I am handling everything that is about the organization internally um, and anything that has to do with it. Um, I am a student in Space Sciences and Technology at the University of Bremen. How did this all start for you? How did you first get interested in this field and yeah, what, what inspired you to get here? Well, I mostly get here by two impulse decisions. <laughs> After school I really wanted to become a baker and that didn't work out because of my height. <laughs> so I started studying um, sustainability studies and mm -hmm. that didn't really work out because there wasn't too much science in it, but a lot of economics and stuff that I wasn't really interested in. So I went to, into a different direction and I studied physics for my bachelor degree and also knew that just theory wasn't my thing. So I decided I had to change for my master program. Mm -hmm. And with changing, I did my second influence decision, which was mostly like, I love space, so why not do anything space related? And then finding a study program that uses physics and is not astrophysics, because that's also very theoretical, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, wasn't that easy. So that is how I went into space sciences and technologies. That's great. I mean, it's not really a very straightforward path, but then you kind of really found your way here. Yeah, it's also, I think, not really, because we always think that you have to have a certain direction and that's the way you go in and you never change. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, with every decision you make, you can like redirect and see what fits you best. Yeah. So, how did you get here? Um, was actually also a little bit um, here and there for me. But for the most part, um, as a kid, I was always just looking at the night skies and got, this got me interested to do a bit of astronomy by myself. And um, I actually wanted to do animation. Um, but there was a one point where I thought like, um, if I'm doing this for fun, it's kind of better to do it for fun than as a job. And then it might get a bit hectic with animation. Um, at the same time, of course, I was enrolled in an engineering degree because a lot of us students first get into engineering and then kind of see what we want to do from there. So I was already in it and then um, I caught myself going to a lot of other astronomy, astrophysics related courses on the weekends and doing a bit more extra. And that's when I realized like, hmm, okay, so maybe I'm a bit more interested in this than anything else. And um, yeah, so I wanted to then pursue a master because uh, my bachelor's was in electronics and communication and I wanted to diverge a bit more into space sciences. So yeah, that's how I started the master program here. Yeah. So you basically made your interest that you had from childhood into your career? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I had a habit of um, rescuing animals a lot at home. <laughs> And I always like to build something new for them, like a tiny lamp for my turtles to bathe in with the UV lamp and stuff like that. And I also did some really funny things like uh, set up a camera recording system to check um, which of my fish were fighting in the bowl. So I did some funny electronics projects as a kid and yeah, I thought I wanted to connect this idea of being interested in electronics and communication stuff with uh, space sciences and that's basically how I have this combination right now. When you were doing all of that, yeah. uh, did you face any obstacles? I think the first obstacle I had, okay, not first, one of the early obstacles I had was with the idea when I was working on my bachelor thesis at the Indian Space Research Organization. Um, I kind of figured that it's such a big organization and there's so many projects going on, so there wasn't quite a well-directed idea of how my bachelor thesis was coming together. <laughs> And I got first introduced to the um, delays that industries have with manufacturing stuff and how to kind of cope with it. So I think like all along one constant that space projects have had is the constant is a delay. There's quite a few delays. You have to learn to understand that um, resilience is really important. Things, Covid I think definitely helped a lot more with resilience for me that hey you might make a plan but it might not work but you still have to try again get up and try again and um, yeah resilience 
kind of came along a bit and understanding that I should have more like a fixed goal, flexible plan that, yeah, plans might change around, but as long as your goal stays, it's okay, so on. Hmm. What about you? What, what kind of obstacles did you have? Well, it's mostly because you do not have any role models here. So because I came from a very different direction and were trying to find my way into anything related to space, because yeah. of interest, um, it was really hard to find somebody who you could use where you're like, okay, they studied this and how to get towards it. By now, for example, I know I should probably have studied something else than physics in my bachelor and went more into the engineering direction because that was more what I like than the theory. Yeah, um, um, yeah I can completely afterwards relate Afterwards, you that. always know what it's better, but uh, you, you never really know who to look up to, especially because here in Germany as a woman when you say I'm studying physics people are always like oh you're going to be a teacher and I'm like no I don't want to be a teacher so uh, yeah. it was kind of a little bit find, finding your own way without relying on gendered role models and yeah. um, that, that was a little bit hard because it also set into perspective why you don't see a lot of women mm -hmm. somewhere and then there were some eye-opening gigs eye-opening experiences where you did an internship and you suddenly realized hey there are a lot of different people coming from different fields a lot of them are also women where you talk to them and like how did you experience it so kind of like cuddling together being what did you do how did you get here what could i to i do to get somewhere where i could also end up in a place like this mm -hmm. so that really helped me set my goal because for a lot of times it was always just like going as far as I could plan right now, for example, like yeah. end of the master degree or end of the bachelor degree or anything like that. So just thinking in packets mm -hmm. and just growing over that to get an idea of what I want to do in the future was really hard for me because I didn't know how to fit everything together. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I would say that was the hardest part to, to find out what I really want to do. Can totally relate. Yeah. I think I also had a similar situation with the role model. Um, lack of having a definite role model um you know how they say like you cannot be what you cannot see so visualizing what you want to be is so important for realizing any of your dreams and luckily for me after coming here i joined women in aerospace europe um, the organization dedicated to empowering women also in the space sector and i just saw so many different stories like i saw people in so many different phases of their life and i saw it as a way to learn from people's mistakes and experiences so that we don't have to make the same and it's it's really great that you also somehow got here to this point and i think the most i realized by the more people i met and listening to their stories most of them started out with people telling them no you can't <laughs> and they were like I want to try. So just, yeah. just going for it. Yeah. It's kind of like also what I did among people told me, you can't do that. I'm like, I'm smart, why shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. just, yeah. just try it. If I fail, I have to find another way. But, and so ju just trying and working it out. Yeah. Uh, but that was really hard in the beginning because there are a lot of voices just asking, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure that's where you, or where do you want to get with that? Are you sure you're going to be employed? And, all of those questions yeah. in the beginning and I feel like that is also not equally distributed when in physics most of my um, other students in the same semester obviously boys so you start and you ask them oh why are you studying physics most of them don't have an answer because they are like they're good in physics they're good in math just study it why not mm -hmm. so every girl you talk to they had an answer because we are asked this question so lot. what do you want to do with it where you want to end up are you sure that uh, yeah. you really start preparing yourself for that answer because you know that question is going to arise somehow that's that's great that's great that you see this constant asking <laughs> as a thing that was like a tool for you to help you kind of figure yourself out i i also think the same there was like a lot of um subtlety in some amount of sexism that was faced where it's like oh you did this despite being a woman and it's like hmm i'm not sure this is a compliment and and, and just working yourself up to this fact where you're like yes it doesn't matter like my interests and my skills are really the only thing that are going to matter so i don't know where this is coming from with respect to the ideas but also just to look back and see how much people had to struggle um it's not too many years ago that women were asked to take permission say from their husbands to be working in an industry and 
it's a bit scary when you think of how this was not too long ago and but at the same time i like to be hopeful and optimistic and say that we've come a pretty good direction so far of course there's a long way left to go but at least we're kind of on our way and the fact that first of all like it takes so much effort when you notice the problem then understand that this has to be solved then get to the solution so imagine if noticing that there's a need to fix this is also coming super late then yeah so i'm kind of hopeful that we're at least on the way and people are now slightly opening up to see more possibilities and i think also at astro this is what we, what we want to show like of course it's for men it's for women it's for anyone we're really inclusive and the idea is to just say like if you share the same interests if you want to also have the passion for building space applications then go for it doesn't matter who you are where you come from what what really 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 matters is the fact that you share the same passion and you also want to explore what you can do and what's bigger than like trying to see how far you can go and like it's 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 just so amazing for me that people slowly realize that oh i can do that oh not bad this is a new capability i didn't know i had it's like putting pieces of the puzzle together and the end puzzle is basically you like you discovering what you can do that's that's always like an interesting process to see in anyone grow yeah I also think that we are very fortunate because the moment you start beginning at the team, in the beginning you notice, especially as a girl, how many girls are there? Who, who are you working with? So you're always checking out the other person and who is that and how did they get here? Yeah. Um, I think there's a certain bond because you're always the minority. So um, I think as soon as you get together in the team and you start working together and to know the other person, it matters less and less. Yep. But the initial thought is always just looking around the room, trying to find out who you're working with. The thing I kind of still hate about the subtleties of the whole work field is yeah. mostly that it's still like some people look at you and say you you got here or you're doing this because you're a woman and you either want to be a role model in the future or you got here because they needed a woman for some kind of quota or anything. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be somewhere because I'm some quota. I want to be there because I have the capability, I have the mindset and I also have all the tools to complete the job. Yep. Um, and I think most women are doing a great job mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't think it's fair to be judged that way, mm -hmm. but it's always in the back of the head. Yeah, I, I can totally relate to that. I mean, I, that, I don't think anybody should have this sort of fear at the back of their mind that they got picked for some kind of quota and not for their skill set, regardless of where they're coming from, what gender, what diversity, it really doesn't matter what they came from, but really to be there for who they are and what they can do. And yeah, um, I'm also kind of working on the side, let's say, to maybe encourage a lot more women. And I think this is going to be a bit of a hassle for us for a while to come because it took many years to get to the bad stage. So it's going to take many years to get to a better situation, let's say. Um, but like most other things in life, I think as long as we're at least on the way, it's, it's something. And with the subtleties of, yeah, sexism, it's definitely a bit harsh. It's definitely um, not easy to cope with. I, I once also had this question for this uh, Japanese astronaut um, in one of the interviews. And I asked her, like, is it just me or do you also have this? First, you're going to have to work with your strengths, your weaknesses, your skill set, things you want to learn, things you can already do. And then there's this secondary thought behind where you also have like an extra added goal or pressure where you have to prove yourself as a woman like first of all you already have this big task with some part of rocket science to deliver on and then there's this extra added pressure where you're like oof if I don't make this then I'm kind of uh, making a lot of other women look bad or this extra sense of pressure and she said you know what it's been so many years of working but I still have this I also have this extra pressure to deliver on things yeah, I think for now we just need a little bit thicker skin, kind of, <laughs> yep. to just cope with it and no. leave it. So when you started out with all the setbacks and all the questions that you were you were asked in the beginning mm -hmm. and finding out what you want to do and developing that, would you tell yourself or your earlier self something about it where you're like, I, you should know this so yeah. you get through it? Um, my younger self, I would first definitely say like, 
um, hey, don't worry, it's all gonna be okay. <laughs> Things work out. Yes. <laughs> it's not the end of the world because this one thing that you planned is not going the right way. Um, secondly, I would have probably learned to understand that um, my self-worth doesn't come from external resources, but what I decide to do, what I accomplish and yeah, and to probably treat um, failures and successes equally because both of them give you some kind of learning. This would probably be like some tips I can think of like at the moment, yeah. What about you? What would you tell your younger self, maybe? Um, just basically know what you want to do and just go for it regardless of what other people say. What um, tools maybe helped you along the way? Do you Did you find... I don't know, some kind of practice that you had on a regular basis that helped you keep your motivation up, let's say. What mainly just visual, visualizing your goals. So once in a while, just make a list, see where you are, kind of like t take, take everything you have, just write it down and make a plan and see how far you got. Mm -hmm. uh, that really helps because sometimes you feel lost on the way to your goals. So mm -hmm. like, where do I go next? What am I still missing and stuff like that? It really helps when you, when you know what you have already done and which tools you already have in your box. Mm -hmm. So that was a bit big big win once I started doing that. And also to do lists. <laughs> I love lists <laughs> and yeah. staying organized um, and finding out my priority of task right now. Yeah, because taking the time and setting a boundary that you cannot always work, you cannot always achieve something just for the sake of achieving it without looking out for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, that is also something you cannot do. So just setting the boundary of I can work until this hour today and then yep. it's, it's done and setting the priorities of this task needs to, do, needs to be done right now this week. How about you? Here are my set of problems. I kind of like first first step is like trying to see is this in your head or is this really a problem and if it's not if it's just in your head you automatically discard this and then if you say like okay this is really a problem then you make the next level of the flowchart which is like is this in my control or is this out of my control and then you say like discard whatever's out of my control and just tackle the one that's in your control a real problem that's really in your control then you're automatically down to one instead of four where do you see yourself in the future? <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. Um, with the given situation, <laughs> let's say that um, there are more estimates of what I want to do and not really fixed for exactly what. Um, but the way I see it is uh, once I get my master done, I definitely want to work with a team that um, uh, has similar goals and values, let's say, really well aligned goals and values. Um, and I do want to still work in space, it's a career, that's at least sorted, not too much <laughs> uncertainty there. Um, but I really want to work as a bridge between science and engineering, because this is what interests me the most. Like, I really understand the aspects of science that are important scientific goals, why we need to explore, why we need to do what we do. But I also, as an engineer, understand the difficulties of implementing some kind of goal in a mission. So this is where I see where I act as a bridge between science and engineering. And the coming together of different systems and people's work really, really inspires me, like as, to work as a team. Yeah. What about you? What about you? Um, um, I am not quite sure where my future is going to lead me. <laughs> um, for now, I'm going to finish my master's degree. I definitely want to stay in space. Um, because of the study program of space sciences and technologies, where you get kind of the outlook on all different systems, on the electrical part, which is not really um, my toolbox because I come from a physics and not from an engineering background, to the Earth observation, which mm -hmm. is one part of it. Um, to sensors that you are going to explore in this you, you just get a broad view kind of everything um, and I mostly like everything of it <laughs> so it's a little bit hard to figure out uh, where to go uh, mm -hmm. right now I'm more focusing on sensors and what you can do with them and achieve with them 
Um, I think for now my interest lay more earthbound because I feel like we can do more here than finding out something on Mars. Yes, it's the next frontier after the moon, but it's just like, it is such a long-term goal that I'm not planning that long in advance. <laughs> yeah. Because there's so much to do that we can utilize here and that we can work towards and where you are so see rewards that we need right now, especially when it comes to sust uh, sustainability and development and learning more about our ecosystem to mm -hmm. find out uh, what we can also see on other planets maybe in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have James Webb now, so yeah. <laughs> who knows what we're going to find in the next years. That's great. That's actually a really um, optimistic way to look at it. And thanks for telling me. Thanks for sharing all these tiny insights that you've had so far and tiny insights you will have into your future. So it was really interesting to hear. Um, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Yeah. Thank you as well. <laughs>